Hello everyone, this is Jim Nix, and in this video, I'm going to share some workflow ideas for getting creative with layers and blend modes. I'll walk you through a full edit of this photo, showing how we go from the before image to the after image. Using this photo of an old truck, I will add several layers and change blend modes to end up with this much more creative outcome. So let's go ahead and get started. If you aren't familiar with blend modes, what they do is they compare the content of two layers and then enact changes based on the content of both. Each mode results in a different look to your photo, and you can choose from 14 different blending modes using the pop-up menu at the top of the layer's controls. The first thing I will do here is to make a quick adjustment on the base layer using the Quick and Awesome workspace. Here I'll use the Accent AI filter to go ahead and get things started. I think about there. Now I'll go ahead and add a new layer, and it'll be an adjustment layer. I'll be using quite a few filters on this layer, so first I click on the Add Filters button to open the filter catalog. Then I come through and select them. First will be Accent AI, and then Tone. Also going to use Soft Glow and the Matte Look filter. I'll use High Key, Brilliance and Warmth, and I'll top it off with Vignette. When I've selected them, I just click on Add Filters to close the filter catalog. Now before I adjust the filters, I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer. You can just click right here to change the blend mode on any layer. I am going to choose Hard Light, which acts sort of like shining a harsh spotlight in the image. And this layer will be all about adding some grunge to the truck and the foreground. First, I will adjust Accent AI. I think about there will do. Next up is Tone, where I'll make a couple of minor adjustments to the Smart Tone as well as the Blacks. With Soft Glow, I'm going to drag the amount pretty far to the right and do the same on the Brightness. Now I'm going to use the Matte Filter, which gives the photo an aged, faded feeling which really fits this subject matter. I'll also adjust the toning on this filter to further enhance the look that I'm creating. I'll start with the Amount Slider and I'm going to go pretty good ways there. I do want to enhance the mood quite a bit and significantly adjust the fade as well. I'll reduce contrast, and at the same time, reduce vividness. Lastly, I'm gonna apply some toning edits. So I think about there on the range. Hue, I'm gonna drag, uh, I think about here, and a saturation, I'm gonna leave where it is. Now I'm gonna use the high key filter to give the image a bright and high contrast sort of look. I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to the various sliders here just to get the image looking the way I want it to look. A couple of further adjustments in these sliders. And again, this is mostly down to experimentation when you're applying so many filters and blend modes. It's really great to experiment and see what works best for you in your particular image. Brilliance and warmth will be used here just to give a little bit of a warmer feel to the image. And then I'm going to top it off with a vignette. And I'm going to go pretty substantial on the vignette. I think something like that, and perhaps not quite uh, so tight around the subject. And lastly, I'm going to increase feathering significantly. Now, I only want to apply these changes to the foreground of the image, and so I'll employ a layer mask to paint this into that area. Just click on the brush icon in your layers panel and then choose brush. Ensure that you're on paint and adjust the size of your brush if you need to. Since I'm doing this across the foreground, I'm going to go ahead and increase the brush size pretty substantially. I also recommend you check your softness and opacity, but I'm fine in this case. And then you just begin masking this in with the brush across the portion of the image where you want these edits to apply. Again, I'm just doing the foreground. And now I'm going to, using my left bracket key, drop the size of the brush and also paint these edits into the top of the truck. You can always click on the eyeball icon to check your mask. And with the right bracket, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger and tidy up my mask a little bit. I think that looks good. Turn off my mask view and click done when I'm finished. At this point, I'd like to add a new layer. So I go back to the layers panel, choose the plus sign and add new adjustment layer. In this layer, I'm going to focus on creating a higher contrast version of the photo, and I'm going to do that using the black and white conversion filter. So I click on Add Filters, choose Black and White Conversion, and then click Add Filters again to close the filter catalog. 
I'll begin adjusting a number of these filters in order to get the high contrast look that I'm going for. And usually this just requires a significant amount of experimentation. I think something like that looks pretty good in terms of the luminance values. And of course, since we are talking about blend modes, I'm also gonna change that here. Instead of normal, I'm gonna click on the blend mode menu and choose soft light. You can see that that had a huge impact on the photo. Now, once again, I'm gonna add another layer. So click on the plus sign, add new adjustment layer. And in this case, I'd like to add two filters, the matte look filter and structure. So I click on add filters. I can choose structure there and matte look right there. And then once again, close the filter catalog. Although I've already used the matte filter once, I'm also gonna change the blend mode to this layer after these two filters are adjusted. So the result will be different this time. With the matte filter, I'm gonna go ahead and drag the amount all the way to the right, along with the fade going all the way to the right. And lastly, I'm gonna also take contrast all the way to the right. At the same time, I'm gonna reduce vividness slightly. In the toning section, I'm gonna go a little ways here just to create a little bit different tones. And I think the other two sliders are fine. With structure, I'm gonna reduce the amount significantly while increasing softness and slightly reducing the boost. Now is also a good time to adjust the blend mode. So I'll go ahead and click on blend mode there and I'll choose multiply. As you can see, this results in a darker color and it's somewhat similar to drawing strokes on the image with dark markers. Here's the before and after. Now for the final touch on this layer, I'm going to apply a luminosity mask. If you aren't familiar with it, a luminosity mask is a mask that's based on the brightness of pixels in the image. Once you choose this option, Luminar will create it automatically and fill the active layer with that luminosity mask. The transparency of the layer is directly related to the brightness of the pixels. This is also a great way to subtly apply your layer edits to the image. To apply the luminosity mask on a layer, just click on the brush icon on the active layer and then in the drop down menu, select luminosity. It'll be created and applied to the layer automatically. You can see that applying the luminosity mask made a huge difference in how the photo appears. And now I'm finished with this layer. Lastly, I will add one more image layer. So click the plus sign and add new adjustment layer. However, this time I won't use any filters on the layer. It's essentially going to be empty, but I am going to change the blend mode for the layer, which actually will impact how the image looks. This is a good tip to experiment with when you're looking for alternative creative outcomes. I'll choose multiply again, but I'm also gonna reduce the opacity fairly significantly. This will soften the overall effect and make the image much more pleasing to the eye. Let me show you before and after of what we've created. There's the before image and there's the after. Here's a split screen comparison as well. You can see it's dramatically different. Now at this point, I'm finished with these creative edits. You can always go back and turn off different layers just to see how those specific edits impacted the final outcome. So for example, I could come over here and let's say turn off this layer. This was the layer that contained the black and white conversion with the high contrast. You can see that the final photo looks vastly different. I recommend just experimenting with it until you achieve your vision for the shot. I'll turn that layer back on. And that's the entire workflow for this image. When we began, the photo lacked any real drama or interest, but by combining the powerful filters in Luminar with layers, masks, and creatively using blend modes, I was able to create a vibrant and artistic outcome. Thanks a lot for watching.